This video is for IGCSE Cambridge specification for business studies and what we're going to be looking at is uh, unit 5. We're going to be looking at all the financial ratios involved uh, such as uh, balance sheets with liquidity ratios, income statements with profitability ratios as well as return on capital employed. So to start off with, we're going to look at income statements and income statements measure the profitability of a company. It should look something like that, like this. Uh, you'll definitely be given sales revenue, cost of sales and expenses, because from those figures, then you can calculate gross profit and profit. Now, to start off with, in terms of gross profit, we can see that um, the formula is here. And it's revenue, which is 100,000 minus 20,000 and it gives us a gross profit of 80,000. Now, if we want to work out the gross profit margin, then we use that 80,000, which is here, and we divide it by our sales revenue of 100,000 and times it by percentage to get 80%. Now, 80% seems very, very high. Uh, we would like to compare it. We'd like to compare it maybe with year on year. So, for example, 2016, 2017. We'd maybe even like it to compare it to the industry average or maybe its nearest rival. But if we don't have that information, then we, we can suggest that 80% is, is, is significant. It's a good figure. Now, in terms of profit, um, we get our gross profit. We deduct our expenses from it. And that gives us our final total of $40,000. It's sometimes known as operating profit and net profit as well. Now, to get the profit margin, we use our 40000 We divide it by 100000 And again, we times it by 100 to get a percentage. And we've got 40%. You'll always get a difference between gross profit and profit because you'd expect the, the profit margin to be lower. Um, that is, of course, of the business. Um, does maybe sell products rather than services. Maybe if it's services, it won't be massively different. Now, just remember in terms of profitability ratios, if the question asks for profitability ratios, make sure that you calculate your gross profit margin and your profit margin and, then, and show it as a percentage. Now, a little bit of information as to what these mean. Gross profit, I'm going to uh, highlight one key part, and that one key part is this bit about adding value. Think about if you think about the difference between your revenue and your um, your cost of sales. It's very similar to the difference of total contribution, and what it what it indicates is that the business is very good at justifying why their prices are higher than their cost of sales. So if they've got a very high gross profit, they're very good at adding value, and they're really efficient at managing their cost of sales. Now the profit margin, as it says here, uh, it means it measures, sorry, how much of every dollar of sales a company actually keeps in earnings. It shows how well the company's managed its exp expenses. So it shows how efficient they are at turning their sales revenue into profit. And again, if their profit margin is low, but their gross profit is high, then you can look closer, maybe at the expenses. It may indicate an issue with their, uh, with their costs. So now balance sheets, um, I'm just going to go through what should be in a balance sheet to start off with. So first of all, non-current assets. These are the assets, these are the things that the business owns that they have no intention of converting to cash yet. Uh, probably because they need them to be uh, to actually produce. So for example, land, machinery, equipment. Now their current assets are the things that they, they want to convert into cash or they already have. Uh, and this is their, their short term gains. So, for example, uh, inventories, they, they obviously hope to sell their stock as fast as possible to convert it into cash. Also, maybe trade receivables. So if they've issued trade credit to a customer and they're waiting for payment, when they get that payment, then obviously that will be the cash that the business receives. Their current liabilities um, is their short term financial obligations. So uh, maybe like a short term loan or a trade payable. So if, if they've actually been issued the trade credit from their supplier, it's, it's I suppose, paying that and um, giving, giving that money that they owe to the supplier. The non-current liabilities is their long term borrowing, uh, their long term financial obligations. For, so, for example, maybe a loan within that. Now, the net total is the difference between their assets and their liabilities. Remember, net means difference. And again, we can work out working capital and our working capital is simply current assets minus current liabilities. 
Now, in terms of equity, just remember that your net total assets should balance out with your equity. And I'll look at that a little bit more uh, later on in the video. So if the video, sorry, if the exam paper asks you to calculate liquidity ratios, just make sure that you do your current ratio and your acid test ratio. The big difference here is the current ratio includes stock, the acid test ratio doesn't. So the current ratio is your current assets divided by your current liabilities. So if we have a look at the, the, the example here, you know that your current assets is 20,000, your current liabilities is 18,000, so we've got 1.11. Now you can demonstrate it any way you want, you can do it as a ratio or you can just simply do it as a decimal. The acid test ratio though deducts the inventories from it. I just it's the, the reason to do that is just to show how dependent the business is on um, their inventories and their stock. So we can see here, this company is very dependent. 15,000 of their current assets is stock. So therefore they have, a, a, without stock, they have 5,000 current assets divided by 18,000 and we are getting 0 0.28. Now, what do these figures mean? Well, first of all, if we look at the current ratio, this is the assumption that they sell all their stock. It's, it's, it's only just liquid. They've got 11 cents left over. So for every $1 of liability, they've got 1.11 to pay it off. Now, most textbooks will tell you it shouldn't be anything less than 1.5 because otherwise there's too much risk. If something happens in the external environment, maybe the economy is not performing, then that might impact demand. Or maybe, uh, maybe something's related to marketing or a new company entering the market. Again, if it, is, if it, if it has a problem with demand and stock isn't sold, then they are not going to be able to cover their financial obligations. And the acid test ratio really tells you this because this tells you that if stock wasn't in the equation, they wouldn't be liquid. Now, I've just put here, the current ratio considers the best picture for the firm in terms of liquidity. It assumes that all stock will be sold. In reality, this might not be the case. and Therefore, the business has to assess the liquidity without the dependency and with the dependency. Right now, equity. Equity is the capital which is paid uh, into the business. And usual examples include share capital, retain profit, even loan capital. And the, the equity should always equal the difference between the total assets and the total liabilities. And there's an example here just to tell you why it should always balance out. So my example is imagine a business buys stock and requests a trade credit to buy that stock. The trade credit of 15,000. Uh, will have an impact on their current liabilities and the stock itself will increase the value of their current assets of 15,000 so it'll balance out. Now in terms of return on capital employed, um, this, is, this is key for investors. Investors want to know what the return will be on the money that they invest within the company. That return is the, is the profit. So usually they will give you the capital employed. They will give you it within the financial figures. But if they don't, then there's two ways of calculating it. Number one, you do your non-current liabilities plus your total equity. Or and it'll give you the same amount. You do your whole, all your assets minus your current liabilities. And that will give you your capital employed. Then you'll also be giving your profit or you'll have to calculate your profit. So in this, in this case, they're giving you the profit of 41,000. So what you do is you get your profit and you divide it by your capital employed. So if we do this together, so I've just added all my total assets um, and I've minus my uh, current liabilities and I've got a capital employed of 117,000. So then if we divide that by the profit, so our profit of 41,000 divided by 117,000, which is the capital employed, equals 0.35. Show that as a percentage, and you've got 35%. Now, 35% uh, is that high? Um, yeah, it appears high, but again, we have to compare it. We have to compare it to previous years or different companies. Now, if you're a shareholder and you're an investor and you're thinking about investing into a company and you have company A that is 25% and company B, which is 35%, then obviously you're going to go for 35% because you know the money that you invest into the company, you're going to get a greater return. 
So I've just picked a question from um, from a paper one just to demonstrate some of the information that we've just gone through. Now, this one is based on luxury destinations. They own three hotels in Country X. The business spends a lot of money on staff training. The finance director is pleased with the financial position of the business. However, the appreciation of our country's currency and the government's plans to increase taxes might cause problems to our business in the future. Now, with this, you can only use the information that they give you. So straight away, they haven't given you sales revenue, so you cannot calculate the margins. They've also not told you how much of the current assets is stock, so you will not be able to calculate asset test ratio. But that doesn't matter. Don't, don't try and find an answer from that. Just, do, just calculate what you can actually calculate. So let's just calculate, first of all, um, the current ratio. So in 2011, uh, the current ratio is one, uh, which again, as I've said before, is not very liquid. It is technically it is because they've got enough assets, current assets, to cover their current liabilities. But again, we don't know how much of that is stock. We don't know if the stock will be sold, especially with issues going on within the economy at the moment. Government's plan to increase taxes or uh, the, the currency appreciate and what that could do. So that, that could be an issue in 2011, but it's even worse in 2012 because we can see that they've got a current ratio of 0.67, which tells us that they're not liquid. They have not got enough current assets to pay off their current liabilities. So we can see that uh, the profit figures do look good. And that's why the financial director is impressed. So it's gone from it's gone from 195 to 220 or the net profit from 30 to 60. So it's doubled. However, this uh, this answer is going to look at an argument between profitability and liquid liquidity so one answer is going to be based on profitability one answer is going to be based on liquidity and then we have to provide a weighted conclusion so what i've said in my in my analysis i put if i was the financial director i would be pleased with the profitability over the two years the profit has doubled which is showing that the business is successful in either compromising or boosting sales However, the short term financial picture is worrying as the company is no longer liquid. The current ratio fell from 1 to 0.67, suggesting that the business is unable to pay off its financial obligations. Now, I've, I've added reason, I've, I've, I've developed and I've, I've added application because just by saying that the profit has doubled, it's telling the examiner that I've looked at the financial information. And by actually calculating the data, what I've done is I've actually manipulated um, the data to give me reasoning as to why the financial director should be worried. So again, that's application. So now I have to provide a conclusion. So I've signposted to the examiner where my um, where my conclusion is by just saying judgment to the question. Make it easier for the examiner. Explain this is my structure and this is what I want you to consider in terms of evaluation. You may have evaluated previous like earlier on in your answer, but just make sure that you've got that balanced argument leading into your evaluation. So I put in judgment to the question, I think the financial director is wrong to be pleased. Now you can argue it both ways. There is no right or wrong answer. It's just about how you justify it and argue it. So I put I would be very concerned about their current situation. So I'm adding weight to the liquidity. As if this isn't resolved, they won't be even in a position to be concerned with profitability. Because if they don't solve their, their, their short term uh, financial situation, they might not even be able to operate. They may, they may be forced to sell their non-current assets, which could again impact their production. However, it could be argued that profitability may help liquidity, but with changing economic circumstances, such as increased tax, this could cause further financial issues. So again, some more application from the case study.